Hi, my name is Ruby. I'm a fitness trainer. I got into fitness training because all this while I was obese. I was fat. I was actually at 85 kilos. I was pretty unhappy with my job back then. Um, I don't really have a good health. I don't have um, my time for myself. So all this while, um, I've been looking for a way out. So I find myself into um, the fitness trainer uh, group. So I signed myself up and I've decided to hop onto this journey. I started walking and then I started sharing with people. It's just walks. So started with my friends, the circle of friends. Then I started with their friends and started with like seniors along the way in the park. So I began liking what I do and I started um, sharing. So my results two years later, it, from 85 kilos, I dropped all the way down to 63. I believe everybody needs help. I'm pretty much very biased towards um, obese people because I come from there. Um, at 85, nobody would actually understand that that weight is actually knee crushing. Nobody could actually understand that by waking up early, it's very tiring. I realized that obese people are really looking for help, but they couldn't find people who can really understand them. Understanding how other people see things, it's actually a journey being as a trans man. Um, I pretty much learned like the mindset of not really minding what other people think because the first step of understanding and accepting myself is actually to love myself first. You know, when you start to believe in something new, fresh, honestly, you don't really feel it. I don't know how we call that, like, feel it, right? So, in 2014, I got into an accident with my friends in Malaysia. Our car spun down the highway and um, when the car stopped, we only left with a carriage. All five of us in the car, um, obviously all got shocked. But the part of it that shocked me was when my partner flew out of the car. Back windows were crashed. I have to turn around and say, where is she? So what did I do? I let go of the tree. <laughs> I went going out of the window, searching if the scarf leads to her body. And when I go out, I don't see a body. The first thing I did was that, and I'm guilty about that, was that before I checked, when she's missing, I claim that God, if you take her away, I am not going to forgive you. But when I crawled out, I saw that she was not there. I tell myself, okay, then where is she? So I went out of the window, I went on top of the car, and I started searching for her. Malaysia, Friday, highway, bad timing, but she was four lanes away on the floor. Lying face up, eyes were flashing from my, from my view, four lanes away. I was like... So I jumped off the car, ran to her. The moment I knelt down, I realized the floor was tough enough to split my knee. So that whole entire incident ended up at a hospital. But at that night, all five of us walked out of this accident. And with my partner, only with scratches. So I am a very logical person. I cannot really think it through, like how. I cannot even logical, like make it logical to me, make it sense. But at that point of time, I realized that there is a God. Because that is the only time where you know that it is not within our control. Then that night after, we went back home. I still remember it was 26 December 2014. 27 December 2014, 
it was a Saturday, 4 a.m. We went back to Singapore and we were at home resting. The first thing I called, obviously, it was my parents when I wake up, telling them I had an accident, but we were survived. But after that, when I described to them what was the wreckage, they cannot believe it too. I cannot believe it too because after that, I realized I was scratchless until I knelt on the floor. It was that sharp. She, my partner, walked away only with scratches. And that's scary now. But when I realized on 27 December 2014 was a Saturday, we rested 28 December 2014. It was a Sunday, we went back to church. And that was the day that I realized that I was appreciating every single person that I see my friends and everybody. I'm telling everyone, saying how happy I am to, to look at all of you because it was gratitude. And then when I was in church, I was crying. I was crying for my first time. Like, like I really brought my, my eyes. Because I asked God this question. I said, if everybody said that I was a mistake, why did you save me? You could have just left me there and there. And it would have just been the best excuse. And that's it. And then, you know, when there's this prayer, there's, I got this answer. A very subtle voice that tells me this very, very softly. And said, what made you think it was your choice to be who you are? You were made to speak this story. You are made and you are not a mistake. God never makes a mistake. And at that point, I dropped and I cried. Since that day, I realized one thing. I was not a mistake and I'm all out to help people. Not because of who I am, but because I honor who I am and I realized that my story could speak to somebody. Somebody out there needs to listen to this, needs to hear from this. And I just hope that this will give people hope. That it doesn't matter who you are, God is there. I'm Ruby and I'm Singaporean.